welcome to Death Stranding Commentary Part 4. Now, this episode was actually the most difficult episode for me to make out of all 10 episodes. And this is actually almost the shortest episode out of all of them. I had a really difficult time uh, deciding where to end this episode. So, I, I had a really difficult time with the beginning, middle, and end. Um, the beginning and middle was easy, but really the end of this episode was actually where all the problems lied, because it was just, there was, like, wherever I ended this episode, I knew that I needed to start the next episode, you know, in a way that kind of made sense. And I just really, really struggled with the third act of this episode. Um, there's a boss fight in the first act, and it's the first boss fight, and I kind of feel like it's slightly anticlimactic, because there's a build-up to the boss fight that goes on for like three or four minutes, and then when the boss fight actually happens, it's about 60 seconds long, and I had filmed that boss fight uh, for well over an hour. I probably filmed it for two hours, um, and then at the end of all of the editing, I had like one minute of usable footage <laughs> with no HUD, so it was. <laughs> there's there's boss fights later in the game that worked out much better, and there's action scenes in the game that worked out much better. And I'm not saying the boss fight looks absolutely terrible, but it's it's kind of one of those things where I'm like, it is what it is. So if you ever see a really really choppy uh, fight scene in a movie, it's not because the editor is an idiot. It's because that is literally all the usable footage the editor has to work with, you know? So if you ever see a movie where there's like a million camera shots during a fight, it's because the frame before that cut and the frame after that cut is literally unusable and you end up with a really choppy fight. So I feel like in about three or four minutes you're gonna see that and yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, I don't know. It is what it is. I mean, the alternative would have been to just play the fight out and have it be three minutes long, but you would have had HUD everywhere, and I'll get into that more when we actually approach that fight. Now, the other problem I had with this episode is, once again, where to end it, and I th there was just kind of no good place to end it, and I don't know, it was, just, it was quite a struggle. This is, to me, it's not a terrible episode, but I feel like it's the weakest episode of all ten of them, uh, personally. So if you happen to watch this episode and think it's even remotely passable, well then that's great. <laughs> but to me it's definitely the weakest episode of the bunch. Um, now there is some interesting stuff in it. I do think like the first two acts of this episode are pretty good, um, except for the boss fight, which, you know, that is what it is. But the third act I feel like just kind of drags, and then it just kind of ends. Because um, I had no good place to end it. Uh, this is the bike. You see the bike in the opening cinematic, so I felt like I didn't really need to set that up. This bike scene could have been longer, but I felt like it really wasn't plot relevant to see him, like, delivering a package at this point in the story, and especially with a musical montage. I just felt like, nah, let's just get on with it, so... He's gonna activate the chiral network, and then the boss fight is gonna happen pretty much immediately, because uh, at this point in the game, when you deliver this package, they tell you to go outside and take a look at the storm, and then when you do, we enter a cutscene that basically ends with the start of the boss fight. But yeah, this, uh, this episode was probably... If you were playing the game straight, this is probably really like four hours of gameplay um, that then had to be condensed down to half an hour. But then it took way longer to film than just four hours because, like, as an example, it would have been four hours if you played the game normal. But like, I had to like fight this boss for two hours just to even kind of, you know, get usable footage. So I had to keep reloading and reloading and reloading to uh, to get the 60 seconds of footage that I w could use. So yeah, it's one of those things where if I was in complete control of the HUD, then this boss fight would probably be under three minutes, but closer to three minutes instead of the 60 seconds, but you know, it is what it is. Um, 
this stuff looks good. Um, that POV shot is interesting because they drag him like probably 200 meters downrange. And then we get our first conversation with Higgs, who is the main villain in the game, sort of. I don't like to say he's the main villain in the game because I feel like this game kind of has like four villains going on in it, but he's the only evil villain, I guess I should say. And uh, he's definitely performed to perfection with Troy Baker. Uh, Troy Baker was the voice actor and the motion cap actor uh, for Higgs. And he really nails it. Uh, this is like his second or third time working with Kojima, so they have a pretty good working relationship. And, uh, yeah, he's very charismatic. He's the most Metal Gear boss of all of the... He's, like, the most Metal Gear villain of everyone in this game. And then we get the, uh, the reintroduction of Fragile. Fragile is going to start being a more important character from here on out in the story. So this episode and the next episode have some really, really good stuff with Fragile, actually. Um... But really, Fragile's going to be along for the ride for the rest of the adventure. This is kind of where Fragile and Sam start actually teaming up. But they don't really develop a friendship until the next episode, Part 5. Well, that man's lost. He's not cut out for politics, is he? Now, this episode does have a music montage, but I didn't actually play the entire song. I played probably two-thirds of the song. And then just kind of faded the song out to get back to the cutscenes. And the problem, the problem with this game, Death Stranding in general, is that we're we're basically now out of the first act and we're we're entering the second act. And the second act of Death Stranding is by far the weakest part of the story, and it's the weakest part of the game. Um, the gameplay is good, but the, as far as the cutscenes and the plot, like the game really slows down in the second act, and you start you start dealing with all these subplots and other characters, and it just it became very difficult. Um, it became very difficult to handle the narrative. Like I feel like yeah, this episode. I don't know, man. Like, I know what the problem is with this episode, and I'm basically like, okay, the problem is the boss fight's too short. And the third act kind of doesn't have an ending. It just kind of goes on for f like five to six minutes of just, you know, exposition. And then it just kind of fades to black, you know? But on the plus side, episode five is very good. And episode six is very good. And seven is very good. And eight is very good. And nine is very good. And ten is very good. So, um, this episode four to me is definitely the weakest of the bunch. But yeah, this uh, this cutscene's gonna end with the camera on Sam's back, and just know that like one frame after where I cut, you would have had a HUD at the top of the screen saying "Defeat the boss," and you're like, "Yeah, thanks, Kojima. Like, thanks. Yeah, I know, I know to defeat the boss. I didn't need you to tell me to defeat the boss." And then after you kill the boss, there's another HUD display at the top of the screen that tells you you defeated the boss with a check mark. So basically, what happened here was that. I had to flip the camera and look at his face and stand perfectly still, but by the time the HUD faded off, the monster was right on top of me and I only got like a one second shot of his face right here before the monster was basically slapping me in the face. And then, you know, I had to string multiple, I had to, I had to fight this boss once again for two hours to be able to string these shots together. And, yeah. I, I cheated with that uh, that like black goo being thrown up into the camera. I used that black goo to like string tons of different shots together um, and try to just bury it in the goo. Um, and yeah, I, I was so shocked when I filmed this for two hours and then was like editing, 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 trying to get you usable footage. And then I was like, oh my god, this fight is like a minute long. <laughs> And because I had already filmed it for over two hours and multiple attempts, I kind of knew that, like, well, this is as good as it's going to be, so. If you look at the top left of the screen, you'll see a little hint of blue. Um, that's a heads-up display, but I basically cropped it out. Yeah, and there I uncropped it, so. I literally had to crop the image to get the HUD in the top of the screen that was like, you defeated the boss! Like, I had to, I had to crop it to get rid of that. Um, but I think that's the last time I used uh, the crop the cropping method in this series, because um, the future boss fights kind of, I don't know, I was able to finagle it, so I didn't have to do that anymore. You can't do 
through them. But yeah, this is the reintroduction of Fragile, where we actually start to get to know her. She's a pretty charming character. I actually really like her, and I, I really like her relationship with Sam as the story progresses. Um, because she's a pretty tragic character. Um, because she basically has like a young person face with an old person body, which might be a metaphor uh, from Kojima, like about aging, you know, where it's like you just get older, but you still feel young on the inside. Whereas, you know, she basically looks young on her face, but then she looks wrinkly and old everywhere else. What's your angle? You want to save the world or you want to fuck it all up like Henry? And so, yeah, Sam is questioning, why does she know that evil terrorist guy? And she's like, well, we used to work together. And then he's like, what? And so she's just like, he used to not be that way. Anyway, we get to know her. Uh, we get to know her better through the next couple episodes. Now, something I forgot to mention in my previous three commentaries is actually that this game has these black title screens at the beginning of every chapter or episode. And I realized that I had edited those out of the first three episodes and never even mentioned it. <laughs> so, like, normally there'd be a title screen that says Fragile, and I just didn't use it, but I, I just hard cut to this. But I used the sound effect of the title screen uh, as, like, a bridge. So I used it as a sound bridge. But in hindsight, I realized that I actually had edited more stuff than I had even mentioned in my previous commentaries. Because I was like, oh yeah, I'm editing out the episode titles. And the reason for that is because I knew I was going to cut, I knew I was going to cut Mama's episode, um, which I'll get into later. That's around episode five or six where her stuff would have come up. And because I knew I was going to uh, edit her out, I knew that if I kept the episode titles in, or the chapter titles, I think they're called episode titles, if I kept the episode titles in, it was going to, I knew it was going to skip some titles, and I knew that was going to be a problem. Because, uh, and technically I was going to skip Hartman stuff too, actually, so that was going to be even more title skips. So I didn't want it to be like, I didn't want you to be watching, like, say, like, part five of my video. Have it say, like, you're watching episode seven, you know, and then, like, maybe a few minutes later it would be like, you're watching episode nine, you know, and it's like, wait, 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 what happened to the, <laughs> so I, I had to edit that out. So in hindsight, uh, I realized that, where I'm like, oh yeah, I totally forgot this game even had, uh, you know, like episode titles, like a black screen with a white text that would say like, usually the episode titles are named after a character. So like one of the episodes is named Higgs, one of them's named uh, Fragile. I want to say one of them's named Sam. Um, Listen, I have some details for you. But yeah, I don't, I don't think this, uh, I don't think this middle part of the episode yeah. is like terrible because uh, Fragile's an interesting character. They're traveling across the Great Lakes. Um, you know, the last episode, he was sent on his mission to basically get to the other side of the country. And we can kind of feel that happening because, you know, he's on a boat traveling across the Great Lakes. So we kind of are starting to get an idea of geography. And we're about to enter a dream sequence with Amelie. And uh, the dr this dream sequence has a pretty nice ending, actually. Like, I like the final shot of this dream sequence um, with Amelie. It's going to have, like, a boat kind of crashing in the background, and, like, you're going to hear a foghorn go off. And then uh, pretty much after this scene, we're a few minutes away from a music montage, um, the one that I was mentioning earlier. Uh, I didn't use the entire song, but I used most of it. Oh, you know something about this episode I actually I, I don't like is um I I didn't realize it at the time because what you have to understand when I was making this series like episodes would be like tens of hours in between each other between me like capturing them, recording them, editing them, planning them out. And this episode has a shower scene which in and of itself is not bad, but because the last episode ended with a shower scene I'm just not into this episode having a shower scene as well. I feel like, man, that's redundant. And, you know, you could argue that all of these scenes on the beach with her in the red dress are redundant, but they're going to be incredibly plot uh, relevant later. But that, that shower scene that's going to happen later in this episode is not plot relevant. Like, it's basically just filler. 
and that's why I ended up cutting the song short because I was like, I just I can't I can't fill this entire song up. But then I also couldn't take the song out because I needed to have him traveling. So that's what I mean when I'm like, I really struggled with episode four. Like this was by far the most difficult episode to make. Um, Cause yeah, I needed to have the song, and you'll see why. Like when you see what what happens in the story, you can tell that like he, Sam has to travel, and anytime he travels, I have to have a song. But then the traveling wasn't too long, and so it wasn't gonna fill the whole song up. Like the traveling took like I don't know two minutes, and so then it was like, well now what? And then I was like, oh, I guess I can like film him in his room for a little bit. Um, so I guess in hindsight, if I could go back. This I I don't know what I would do to fix this episode personally. Actually, technically I do know what I would do. I would not have the shower scene. <laughs> I would not have the shower scene, and maybe that would fix it. Come on, I'll take you. And yeah, there's nothing wrong with the shower scene, but you just I don't know. I shouldn't have had two in a row. The thing about the musical montage that's coming up is that it has one of the longest shots in the entire series because the HUD didn't screw me over actually. So like this is this one really long tracking shot that I feel like looks really nice, came out really nice. Um, but then I got to my destination too quickly, and I was like, okay, now what? You know, what do I do? We used to play together a lot in this place. You brought me here. I couldn't. Yeah, and I love at this point. Um, I love at this point as the audience, you're like, okay, there's something really weird going on with Amelie. You know, there's something really weird going on with Amelie. You're like, why Why is little boy Sam, why is she the same age when she's around little boy no, Sam? Until you, make her whole again. I, you know, like, y you as the audience is like, wait, I thought she was his sister. Like, what is going on? Um, and once again, this is all going to make sense later. I'll be waiting for you on the beach. I do like that line of dialogue, too, by the way. The whole, I'll be waiting for you on the beach. Like, I like I'm that she tells it to the little boy. I like that she keeps telling it to him. I like that his dying mother said it to him as well, you know, when he saw like that glimpse of her face. I don't know how it feels. Need to pick me up? Welcome to Lake Knot City. Yeah, so traveling further west. What? Let's go. Sorry, I'm actually just watching it. Uh, that's a problem. <laughs> um, yeah, we're about to hit a musical montage in about 60 seconds. And then I'll, I'll, I guess I'll discuss some of the camera work. But yeah, this episode has like 10 minutes left. And I don't know, I mean, maybe what I should have done with this episode is just let it be ridiculously short. Maybe I should have just kept this episode at like 20, 20 minutes. Um, but, I mean, I don't know. This episode is already a short episode, because this episode's already not even a half an hour, and like most of the episodes are a half an hour or longer. And then this episode ends up being like 27 minutes, but I'm still struggling with it. That's why I'm like, I don't know, episode 4 this is by far the most difficult episode for me to put together. Because it, it is actually pretty difficult to take like, you know, 5 hours of a game and then try to condense it into like a half an hour episode and have it kind of make sense and flow properly. Like, not as easy as you would think. It's not as easy as just stringing the cutscenes together, that's all I'm going to say. I think this is the long shot. I think this is the shot actually, where this shot you're looking at right here is going to go on for an eternity. And it's because the HUD didn't interrupt uh, the shot. So the one nice thing about, I guess, this sequence is that it gives you an idea of how things could have been had the HUD not fought me the entire time. Because I would have loved to have done these really long Children of Men style shots, or these really long Revenant style shots. And, you know, freakishly, this is one of the only times the game didn't fight me. Technically, uh, the game gave me the location of where I was headed, but I'm okay with that because movies have, like, you know, Paris. You know, like, it'll tell you what city they're at. So, see, it says, like, not sitting in the top right corner. I didn't really count that as part of the HUD. I counted that more as, like, a storytelling device. And because there's a cut there, I promise it's probably because the HUD. 
So that was that's about the longest I could ever get footage for um, in the entire mini series without the HUD interrupting me. So for real, I mean that was probably like a minute, and that's like the longest shot in the entire series uh, because that's all the game would let me do. Yeah, so he's connecting the internet up. We have a montage for him. And then this is uh, another delivery. I just thought that shot looked nice. I thought that background was interesting. This was way earlier in the game, but I thought it looked so nice that I just used it. Because remember how I was like, well, I gotta fill this footage out. Because I had too much song left, you know? Um, so I thought, well, let's just have him do this, and then it'll feel like more time is passing, and that he's connecting more internet up. And so that was my logic for stringing these two sequences together. Yeah, this is basically just filler. This is basically just filler for the song. So yeah, had I not, had I not put this filler in, you would have had like that song play for like a minute, <laughs> and then he would have gotten to the first destination, then he would have gone down this thing. And yeah, I don't know how that would have worked. But yeah, in hindsight, this shower scene is just filler. It's not that I like looking at naked Norman Reedus. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> like, I love looking at naked Norman Reedus. Get that in every episode. You imagine if I had a shower in every single episode? <laughs> oh, man. So this episode has six minutes left, but we're at the 21 minute mark. And that's why I'm like, you know, maybe the episode should have ended right then and there. But then you would have had a 21 minute episode. But then coming back here, this feels crazy because you're like, ah, oh, what is this, like the fourth time we've gone to the beach in this episode? And that's what I mean when I'm like, I had a really difficult time with episode four. And I want to say that technically the mama stuff that I cut out has not happened at this point in the game yet. So I don't want to hear like, oh, well, if you hadn't cut mama out, this would have worked out fine. It's like, no, no, it wouldn't have. I would have still had this exact same problem. And uh, the mama footage would have been, you know, in, in part five, basically. And then everything else would have been kicked down the road. There wouldn't have been ten episodes. There would have been at least twelve episodes. And everything would have been shuffled down court, essentially. So, just know that if I had kept mama and Hartman, it would not have solved any, any of the problems with episode four, truly. And yeah, this is all going to be intensely plot relevant later. I love when she looks over at him breaking, like... She's basically breaking time and space when she looks over at, like, the older version of Sam while, you know, talking to the younger version of Sam. I think this is fragile. Yeah, this is fragile. So one thing that I am looking forward to is in part five, there is some really, really good stuff with uh, Sam and Fragile. And why are you here? Got a delivery for Paul. We're basically watching uh, their relationship really starts to develop in this part and then also in part five and six and so on. And yeah, I mean, I guess I can discuss spoilers because whatever this whole commentary is a spoiler. But I did want them to end up kind of happily ever after at the end of this game. Because um, I do feel like both of these characters end up developing, they end up developing feelings for each other, but the game just kind of ends uh, on a level where, I don't know, it's not set in stone that they're going to end up happily ever after. And I do kind of wish that that had happened, but I guess it's not really, that's not really Kojima's style, or, uh, or really Japanese men's style in general. Japanese characters, like the men are always like, you know, getting hit on by women, and then the men are just kind of rather foppish, and are like, eh, I can't commit, or I can't date you. They never really have great reasons why. You could argue that, you know, he doesn't want to date her because she's got the old lady body, but, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I guess it's a separate subject. We can use the beach. Oh, yeah, remember that, remember that part in episode one when he crashes his bike into her? And that might confuse you. Well, you know, 
flash forward to part four, it's no longer confusing, you know? You're like, it's explained. She basically has magic teleporting powers uh, by using, uh, you know, the Death Stranding beaches to travel. So in hindsight, that's what I meant when I'm like, you know, every random crazy thing in this game actually ends up getting explained and you will understand it by the end. You all right? The chunks take a lot out of you. But my blood dies. Okay, so what is, how does this end? This episode only has two minutes and 30 seconds left. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess it's, it's, this episode's basically just going to end. With, oh, you know what? This episode's going to end with him going back out to deliver a package, and then we're just going to basically fade out as he's leaving on the elevator. So this episode's probably going to end with a cliff scene, now that I think about it. So... I don't know. I mean, I guess for like the worst episode in the series, or my least favorite episode in the series, it's not that bad. Um, but I just, I don't know. It's definitely my least favorite episode. It's still got some decent stuff in it, though. I mean, I feel like all the stuff with Fragile is good. But in hindsight, I feel like there's too many scenes on the beach with Amelie. And... Yeah, that shower scene is kind of a hassle. And, you know... I don't know how I necessarily feel about it. And, you know, I, I mean, does this episode have anything overtly melancholy in it? Like, I don't really think so. So I feel like I broke my rule of, like, well, every episode needs to have something terrifying in it and then something kind of overtly melancholy in it. And I feel like this episode definitely doesn't have anything melancholy in it, you know, at all. So maybe that's, like, the problem with it. Maybe that's why I don't like it. I said literally, I'm like, oh, I'm not really a fan of the ending, and I'm definitely missing the formula. I know in episode five, we're going to have a bunch of melancholy stuff and a bunch of horrible stuff. So, like, episode five is really good. Big fan of episode five. I also really like... Uh, I didn't keep all of these Mad Mickelson scenes, believe it or not. I, I cut a bunch of them out, but I kept some of my favorites. I kept the ones where it just seemed like he was a good dad. And I thought this one was cool. So yeah, we're about to fade to black. This scene's got like 20 seconds to go. And... Yeah. Anyway, this was the most difficult episode to make, and definitely a struggle. So, I w you wouldn't think so. You wouldn't think this would be the hardest episode, but this was by far the hardest episode. I'm I'm way looking forward to part five. Uh, <laughs> I'm way looking forward to part five.